Every star becomes a black hole at the end of its life? No, because if, if um, something like the sun... Um, we have then, a small star. It's quite small, yeah. And, and when it collapses, there's a there's a, a, a sort of a pressure, a force, if you like, which is caused by the fact that electrons don't like to be very close to each other. So it's called the Pauli exclusion principle. But essentially what happens is that, so as they get squashed closer and closer together, they move faster and faster to sort of get out of each other's way, if you like. And that makes a force which holds them up. And so that creates what's called a white dwarf star. So, so you can have a blob of matter. They're about the size of the Earth, but they're about the mass of the Sun. And uh, so that's, that's for smaller stars. They end up as these white dwarf things, which are very dense objects. There's another version, which is called a neutron star, which is the same thing, but for neutrons. And they, they move faster and faster. So the, if, it's, if it's massive enough that it overwhelms the electron thing, then the electrons sort of fought, crush into protons and turn into neutrons and the whole thing starts again. And so a neutron star can be, you know, at least one and a half times the mass of the sun, let's say, but it can be about, what, 10 miles across? <laughs> so, so that's an incredibly dense ball of matter held up by this, the neutrons moving around. It's got a fancy name, it's called neutron degeneracy pressure, but that's what it is. But if you go even bigger, then even that can't hold it up. And as far as we know then, there's no known force that we know of that can hold, hold the thing up if it's, if it's too massive. And so that's when it just it almost winks out of existence, if you like. It collapses and collapses and collapses, and, and that's when you get a black hole. You try to put that into perspective. The, earth, the sun is a million times bigger than the Earth. Yeah. And this, this neutron star is, what would you say, one and a half times the mass of the sun, yeah, so but they, 10 they, miles wide? Yeah, yeah. So, and there's loads of those around. They're called pulsars. So we, we, we see those all over the place. The, the first one that was discovered was called LGM-1 because they spin very fast. And then it was called LGM-1 because it's a very regular pulse and they thought it was Little Green Men. Oh, so they wow. called it kind of jokingly Little Green Men 1. And then, so yeah, we, we've seen that there's one called the Crab Pulsar, which is in the Crab Nebula, which we saw the supernova explosion. So that's when it one of these stars explodes at the end of its life and then collapses to form a neutron star. And we saw that in 1054 AD.